Coming up on Yes, We're Open. Meet the entrepreneurs who've given new life to a historic Foothills Tavern and restaurant. Yeah, it's just this, unique. This is like cheers on steroids. There you go. A couple turns their love for raising backyard chickens into a business. It is a really, really small business. Come on, everyone. Um, we're certainly not gonna be on the Forbes list anytime soon, but uh, that's fine. Discover the story behind a nationally renowned greeting card business catering to African-Americans. We beautify the African-American experience. This is actually one of our first cards we ever printed. There's just a need for this. And an entrepreneur turns personal loss into a successful business, creating sun protective apparel for others. I really love affecting people's lives and you know, bringing goodness to the world. Cool, awesome. It's all next on Yes, We're Open. Yes, We're Open is made possible by I'm Greg Howes, and this is my partner, Brian Fikes. No, you were supposed oh. to say, this is Brian, and oh, then sorry. I say, this yeah. is Greg. Okay. Take two. And together we are Two Flew the Coop. Come on, everybody. Come on. There's just something on, about chickens. I, I, it's a million dollar question. I'm not quite sure what the answer is. You just want to be held. Huh. She's going to get jealous. Yes, yeah. I know. They kind of work your magic on you. You can, you can see their little minds processing stuff when they're out scratching about. Ready for your close-up? She's a big girl. And she has a beautiful profile. These more exotic ones really are, they're eye candy. <laughs> they look like little showgirls with their crests. Let's see your cute face. There's animals for everybody. <laughs> there's chicken people, there's horse people, there's cat people, there's dog people, so everybody Excuse has their me, favorite ladies. animal. Come on, everyone. Come on. <laughs> Here, chick, chick, chick. So Two Flew the Coop, we kind of, a tagline is everything for backyard chickens. We retail artisan chicken coops. We also sell premium organic feed from Modesto Milling. And then we also offer education to teach folks how to have backyard flocks of their own. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks so much for coming today. We Thank really you. appreciate it. I'm Greg Howes. This is Brian Fikes. And together, we run our uh, business, Two Flew the Coop. Once a year, usually in the spring, is the time that we hold a three-hour class. It's literally a chicken 101. People always ask, what's a lifespan? For a backyard chicken, eight to 10 years. For a chicken that's had good health and been well taken care of. When it comes to answering questions on day-to-day -day care, uh, housing, feeding, that type of thing, that's where we come in. So this way you can see, I can walk if I've got to take the bird over here. And I've got complete control over her. That's a good way to handle a chicken. She is a hefty girl. <laughs> People say, is there that much information to learn about backyard chickens? There really is. What we really want this class to be, again, is what was not available to us when we started. We thought really what needs to be done for this backyard chicken movement is have real backyard chicken keepers teach a backyard chicken keeping class. Based on personal experience. Based on personal experience. We started when it was highly illegal. We were one of those underground chicken keepers. Um, I tend to be a little obsessive and every time a helicopter flew over I was for sure that they were coming to you know, come after my chickens and I was going to jail. <laughs> but I, I digress. Now, I do talk too, but <laughs> as you notice, he can Just talk a little bit. nonstop without taking a breath. We are actually a married couple. Yeah, we're legally married. Um, been together for you know, 20 some odd years. Oh, Eureka, here we go. Beautiful eggs today. Folks always ask about that, is that difficult, you know, sort of working together? But it works out really, really well. 
And I think it's because we know each other's strengths and weaknesses. Because I can be kind of whoop, and then Brian is here. So we kind of meet at a really good spot. I, I'm pretty good about sometimes reining them in and keeping on schedule, keeping on track. <laughs> Brian, with his background, with numbers and things, does all of the financials for us, which is really good. That's not my forte at all. To me, I just hear blah, 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 blah when it's numbers. Um, but when it comes to you know being able to decorate coops and things like that, that's my territory. They're fully functional, but he's able to put his own artistic spin on them. We had karma coops that had you know prayer flags and Buddha images and things like that on it. Cowboy coops. Gosh, we did, you know. Pirate themed. Pirate themed. The ramp that the chickens walk up became the plank. I'd say now they've kind of gone a little bit more, we kind of stick with a sort of a gardeny old farmy kind of shabby chic kind of look now, but it, it really is sort of what put us on the map with that these coops were really, really different. Kind of a piece of yard art, not just a functional chicken coop. Well, hello there, Cora. Egg making is going on. So we'll close this and let her go about her business. Give her some privacy. It's all about production. <laughs> all right, continue on. Being that we operate from our home, people can come by at eight or nine o'clock at night if they need chicken food in a hurry. Do you mind that? I mean, you know, if we... they call first, <laughs> that's appreciated. We try to be really old fashioned. If we're gonna be away on a weekend, we'll leave feed bags out on the front porch for people and they drop money in the mailbox. Okay. We trust folks, yeah. It's kind of like Mayberry. Come on. It is a really, really small business. We're certainly not gonna be on the Forbes list anytime soon, but slow and steady is absolutely fine. As long as it stays profitable. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when Zaza went over the back fence? Our neighbors thought we were trying to break into their house and uh, the police were, were called. <laughs> well, they did see somebody go over the fence, so. <laughs> Always something interesting with these gals. I think from the, from the beginning and to the way we feel now, I think things have remained the same in really allowing other people through what we offer to be able to do this wonderful hobby of keeping backyard chickens. This is a very nice spot to be in the morning. Enjoying backyard chicken lifestyle, what it's all about. A small business is defined as any company with less than 500 employees. California is home to more than 4 million small businesses, which make up 99% of all businesses in the state. They employ more than 7 million people, nearly 50% of the state's workforce, making them a vital part of California's economy. So I grew up in Niagara Falls, New York, born and raised, and uh, it was uh, about 19 years old. My brother was out in California, my dad asked me if I would like to come out and visit them for, for you know, Christmas. So I came out for Christmas with a plan. It was a two-way ticket, but I only used one, one part of it. <laughs> I just felt that I was created for more. So I came out with $300 in my pocket, just looking for opportunity. Didn't know where they would take me, but I was determined to make it. Yeah, I, I, think, I think we've done quite well. Well, today, after um, 28 years in business, um, we have become the largest in the world at what we actually do. I like to think that anything that you see in a Hallmark store, we're the black hallmark now. We create Christmas cards, calendars, planners, figurines. We beautify the African-American experience. How can you not love that? Especially if you're African-American. We felt that Hallmark was missing the point. The African-American community cars that didn't look like us. They were actually Caucasian images painted brown and they were serving to the African-American community. And we said, no, we, that's not us. We feel that we could do that better. We could do imagery of ourselves in the way we speak for us, by us. And so that was what fueled me to move this thing forward. This is actually one of our first cards we ever printed. 
And it just brings me back to remember how starting in my home, working out of my garage, I actually get a little emotional when I look at this. Reminds me of the, the 28 years of hard work. It just brings joy to my soul. Never have I thought it would be as big as it is today. Today, we're housed in a 42,000 square foot facility. We have over 700 products now. And so we manufacture those offshore, we bring them in, and we sell them to stores all around the world. It's really cool because we can think it, we can create it, design it, send it to our partners in China, and we can have a product within a week at our doorstep. I attribute 100% uh, of what I do in business to my faith. And so we were involved in the homeless ministry downtown where we, we leased out an 8,000 square foot facility to feed the homeless. And uh, out of that, we, we said, let's do something a little more. I had a project that I needed done and uh, I said, why don't we hire? So we hired eight homeless people. Out of that, hiring eight people, we have one that's stuck. He's not only working, but he's the lead guy in the warehouse. Oh, it changed my life. And like Greg always told me, you're not homeless, you're just in transition. So that transition from homeless to getting a job, getting married, and buying a house. As, and I'm here now, I'm a changed man. It impacted me so much. Stuffed him. So that's what's gonna go to Essence, right? Essence. Okay, good. To see myself in this position now, I couldn't even think about it. We're gonna wrap this up. Let's get then, out. Let's and get then out. we can schedule that. We're still on time, right? Schedule yes, we wise? are. Okay. We are on schedule. It's all about taking a team, empowering your team, and letting them do what they do best. So definitely going out today. Definitely going out today. Greg has that insight to see oh, yeah. through people. He sees what's inside you, and he will do everything to bring that out in you. Oh, let's get it done. And then we're done. Beautiful. The impact that he has on people through his cards and everything, it's, I've never seen it before. Never. His heart is filled with love. Really proud of you, man. But I'm proud of you <laughs> for sticking with me. I love God and I love people. And uh, I like to think that God created me to do what I do. I believe it's my calling. We put smiles on people's faces. Okay, that's what we do. We spread joy, we spread, we spread the love through gifts. Just how many entrepreneurs in the U.S. began their business from home? Is it A, 30%, B, 50%, or C, 70%? The answer, C. Nearly 70% of businesses were started from home. My brother and my objective from day one, though, was if we're going to do it, we're going to do it right, and we're going to fix this place for the next 50 years. If we didn't do it, it wouldn't get done. And it would just sit in disrepair and never reopen. But it had so much history. People just have special feelings for it, and they always have. Brothers Mike and Jeff Genovese and restaurateur Mike Countullis are the trio behind Resurrecting Poor Reds, a popular local watering hole rich with history dating back to gold rush days. However, the beloved tavern almost met its demise when its doors were suddenly shut in 2013. We pulled in, and a guy next door, old guy, crusty, big white beard, goes, it's closed. Poor Red's shut down after its previous owners experienced serious legal problems. I was in foreclosure, found out that it was for sale, basically, and it had almost 40 liens on the property. Nobody wanted to touch it. It was a nightmare and a quagmire. I said, okay, if we can buy it, we need a guy, an expert, to run it. 
and we found him. Do you have any special today? Yeah, we're going to do the sausage sandwich today. Mike grew up in a family of successful restaurateurs and already had experience reviving the Purple Place, another historic local tavern. But convincing him wasn't easy. There's no way we could have reincarnated poor Reds without him. Time and time again, he's gone. You don't understand what a stupid idea this is. It didn't pencil out. You know, for an 1850s building with some add-ons that had to be all torn down and rebuilt, it's tough to make it in this industry. So we kind of went round and round. I think there were some choice words. and He called my manhood into question and said, let's just do it. <laughs> uh, and you know, he's, they're great partners that way. Despite the odds, the three of them were able to return Poor Reds to its former glory. It's a living piece of Gold Rush history. Poor Reds has always been a gathering spot in the small town of El Dorado. The iconic stone building was built in 1856 as a Wells Fargo way station. In 1927, it became a local bar named Kelly's. 18 years later, a man known as Poor Red won the bar in a game of dice. He and his wife, known as Rich Opal, ran it through the 1960s. Even before they reopened Poor Reds in 2016, Mike and Jeff promised to retain the charm and character of the place. So we knew if we could get it back on its feet the right way, keep the historical aspect like we did, mix in the new that we needed to do, that it could work. Let's put it this way, there was more to it than I thought. We used local contractors for the whole job, and that's what also made the place special because all those folks knew the place, mm -hmm. and they put love and care into redoing the place as well. So a lot of credit all the way around there. We figured out a few things like the extra dining room that we have over here. Then the patio, tear down the barn and put a patio in. That was another thing we needed to do. One of the things that we agreed upon early on was that we're going to have good food. Mike found Dean Hyatt, our chef, and he's done a great job in the kitchen, and the food here is spectacular. You got it? Blending the old and the new proved to be a winning combination. Of course, preserving the tavern's history meant keeping the legendary drink that put poor reds on the map, the Gold Cadillac, a blend of Galliano, creme de cacao, cream, and ice. This is like cheers on steroids. There you go. That's, that's it in a nutshell. People just have special feelings for it, and they always have. People like Marlene Edwards, who's been coming to Poor Reds since she was 25. Today, she's here to celebrate her 85th birthday. But it's just a great place to come, get together with friends. It's just, it's just a fun place to go. So these are our dollar points okay. for Red Tradition. The nice thing about the bar is you'll walk into the bar any time of the day, you'll see a guy like me sitting there next to a guy in a suit and tie, next to a guy in t-shirts and flip-flops. It could be anybody in here. And they're all talking to one another. That's the great thing about the bar, the high-low bar, is people talk across the bar to one another. Whose bachelor party is it? It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> There's no other place in this area like that. No, no other bar around. You know any other place around no, like no. that? Well, we're all definitely pleased with the new yes. four reds. This was a kind of a crazy thing to do. You know, th this has been a lot of fun. There is something to be said for these old gems in these hidden counties that are going by the wayside. It's been a blast. I, I love coming here. I love being part of it. And what I like most about it is people that come up to me and talk about the place are very appreciative of what we've done. And that makes me feel really good about where we're at with this. call our sun protection apparel sun protection soldiers. Every unit that leaves our warehouse is on a mission. 
and that mission is to help save lives. You know, you hear about the cliche that the tech companies start in the garage. Well, we started UV Skins in a barn. We had a barn on our property, and that's where we would run the company from. So we started an apparel company up here in the foothills. Rhonda Sparks has taken her company from its humble beginnings and grown it into an 8,000 square foot office and warehouse located in Sonora, California. UV Skin sells peace of mind in the sun. We basically manufacture some protective clothing for the whole family, from babies all the way to adults. Let's pull them over there and just start looking at them from yeah. there. Okay. All of our uh, products are UPF 50 plus, um, and basically what that means is that it blocks 98% of UVA and UVB rays from penetrating the fabrics, so you won't get a sunburn. And the neckline is what we were looking at before, mm -hmm. and then the length, okay. I think our customers will love it. Okay. If I could do all this for free, I would, and just raise awareness about sun protection. So anything we do has that instilled in it. It's important to get the message out there. It was a personal tragedy that inspired Rhonda's passion for the cause. UV Skins started because I lost my first husband to melanoma. He was 32 years old. We had three little boys at the time. They were one, three, and six. He passed September 14th, 2001. So it was three days after 9-11. You know, the whole country is grieving from that crazy experience, and then three days later, I lost my husband. It was a trying time for sure. It was tough even to get out of bed. I mean, it was a couple of years of autopilot. But once I kind of got through the, the grieving process, um, I just realized that there was something stirring in me, this passion for wanting to, to raise awareness. It just was a calling. I had no idea what I was getting into. So complete ignorance, had no idea anything about the fashion world, how to make clothes, was never a dream of mine to own a clothing company, but I just knew that this needed to happen. One of my favorite quotes is, leap and the net will appear. And I, I can't even tell you how many decisions I've made on that, where I have no idea what the outcome's gonna be, but we're just gonna go for it. Several years of trial and error combined with sheer persistence led to her creation of sun protection kids clothing, which Rhonda began selling to local boutiques. Eventually, she landed Nordstrom as her first big retailer, and the business took off from there. Putting on one of these hats from UV Skin Sun Hats gets me off the hook a little bit with sunscreen. Evan is wearing a great piece by UV Skin. Today, a majority of the clothing is sold online through the UV Skins website. Manufacturing takes place overseas, while the rest of her enterprise happens at the headquarters where Rhonda heads a full-time staff of over 20. This is also a new style, the Racerback Swim Tank. This was the first thing sold. You can't do this without a team. 's goodness to the world. We're potentially saving lives with every piece that goes out the door. It's been um, a great process for me. You really realize quickly what's important in life. Family comes first. Now remarried and a mother of five, she looks to the future. 
It's a surreal experience. You don't think you're gonna fall in love again, and then at the same time, I can't imagine life without John Jay and these beautiful babies. I know if, if Darren is looking down, he would be really pleased. You know, he would be happy that it's turned out this way. The lessons that I've learned going through the loss of Darren have just been immense. Your heart breaks into a million pieces from the loss, but then it, it literally comes back, I feel like, even bigger because of the compassion I have for people and the empathy. I never feel done. And so I actually have to force myself to reflect and look at um, how much greatness we've already done and the lives that we've affected. But for me, there's so much more opportunity out there to keep helping families. Who needs electrolysis? <laughs> Yes, We're Open is made possible by 